Hi, my name is Jim Paul. Uh, I'm recovering from a uh, surgery to repair a ruptured quadriceps tendon in my left leg. I'm making this video because other people may benefit from it. You know, people are wondering, you know, when they have this, how are they comparing to other people? Is the recovery seem to be on par with other people? Surgery is a little scary. It doesn't all usually works, but it's not guaranteed and you may not recover completely. You may lose a little bit of lane, uh, range of motion. <clears throat> I, some other people have made some videos. Um, Jared Body Works, he's been very reliably making videos, uh, and there's been some other ones. There's also a Facebook support group for this injury. So the quadriceps tendon connects four muscles, all four major muscles in the upper leg, converge to the quadricep tendon, and that tendon runs over the kneecap to the bottom of the leg and is responsible for balance and straightening your leg. It's not a common injury. It, it, some risk factors are being older, which I am, and having arthritis, which I do. Uh, typic other typically older people or people that are involved in rough sports tend to get this injury. Uh, it's a long recovery time because, from what I read, tendons don't have much blood supply, so they take a long time to heal. Uh, my doctor said 12 weeks, but reading other things online, really for a good recovery, probably more like half a year to a year. I learned, I injured my knee when I was taking lessons to paraglide in central Spain, in Andalusia, Spain. And on the very first day, I came down hard on my left leg and snapped the tendon. It took me the better part of a week to realize it's a fairly serious injury and that I'm gonna to need to return home and have it repaired. Uh, I was able to walk on it almost right after the injury if I could keep that leg straight. Uh, but a series of three flights and wheelchairs in the airports, I managed to get home and uh, quickly get a doctor appointment and they scheduled surgery pretty quickly. So a total of 12 days went by from the time I injured the knee to the time the surgery was done. And they say the surgery should be done as quickly as you can. It, the prospects are better if it's done quickly. Walking, so, people, so I, like, I was able to walk almost immediately. Uh, for the first two weeks, maybe even three weeks, I used crutches somewhat. But uh, as you can see from this walking, I can walk okay now. I mean, it's more like hobbling than walking, but I can get around. So um, for the protocol for this surgery for just about everybody is absolutely no movement of that knee for the first two weeks. So some surgeons will put the knee in a cast. Uh, more typically, you'll be wearing a leg brace and that leg brace will be set at zero degrees so your leg's straight out in front all the time. After two weeks, it seems to vary quite a bit. In my case, I'm not to ever bend that knee or to use the quadriceps muscles, except when I'm working to improve my range of motion. Um, there's one other exception. After I've improved my range of motion somewhat, like I have a couple weeks ago, I, I started to, I'm allowed to unlock the brace when I'm sitting down. As far as sleeping, I started sleeping without the brace at about three or four weeks. It's, the leg seemed to stiffen on its own. That's the thing about the range of motion. It seems like every day you're starting back at zero again. Uh, so some people get physical therapy or they do home exercises. My doc, to get the range of motion back, my doctor prescribed a passive continuous motion machine. And so here's, here's what that thing looks like. I'm to use that three times a day, two hours a session, so six hours total a day. And you can adjust that machine in two degree increments. I like it because you have a lot of control over how much tension you're putting on the knee. At um, 14 days, which was my follow-up appointment, my knee was still quite swollen, my lower leg was swollen, and my foot was considerably swollen. So my doctor sent me for a venous Doppler blood flow study of my lower leg. And to see if I had a blood clot, but luckily I did not. Uh, that swelling started to get better after I started putting my leg on the machine. The swelling in your lower leg and foot is 
due to blood pulling there, you're, you're not using the leg, or if you're not having the leg raised when you sleep, those can all contribute to too much swelling. So here's, here's what my knee looks like now. Now it does go up and down, swelling goes up and down depending on how much stress and what part of the day it's in, but uh, that's pretty typical. Also, it's typically warm. It can be quite warm to being just a little bit warmer than the other knee. Sometimes, particularly if I have an incident, which I'll mention, I'll talk about in a minute here, uh, I'll get shooting pains under the patella, and that's a setback. You know, I'm worried that I damaged it. That happens for a number of reasons. Um, twice I've had spasms of my quadricep, which put a lot of strain on that tendon and probably caused some minor damage, but luckily within a day or two I was feeling fine after those. The other thing that happens is you're pushing the range of motion. It's hard. You have to push, but you can push too hard. And twice I've pushed too hard and got some shooting pains and you know, overdid it and got minor setbacks. There's one other setback that's particularly dangerous that if you haven't realized, if your doctor allows you to unlock your brace when you're sitting down, and it's much more comfortable if you do that, it's very easy to get up and forget to lock that brace. So if you were, to, and I've done that maybe five times now, uh, caught myself walking with my brace wide open, which means my knee could buckle, and that would be end of game if that happened. Or rising out of a chair and using my left leg quadriceps to stand up. That could tear, tear the, the, the stitches out inside. So what I've resorted to is I have this shoelace and it's tied to one of my belt loops. If I undo my, unlock my brace, then I tie myself to a table or tie my legs together, which I've done right now, so that if I get up, I'll have some physical clue that I need to lock the brace. So, you know, I live alone and I'm spending a hell of a lot of time by myself in my house. Fortunately, I have uh, a neighbor who drives me to and from my appointments. My friends have been keeping tabs on me, sending me books. Uh, I keep busy by re I've taken up drawing. It's an old hobby. I work on my Spanish language skills. I try to avoid perusing YouTube a lot and sometimes I watch movies. The other thing that helps me is I've, for a good part of my life, I've had this routine that I do almost every day. It involves physical exercise with usually free weights, which are in the basement right now. It involves a meditation, a mirror talk, and prayer. I have not been able to use the free weights, so I'm using these exercise bands, and I'm just very careful not to do any exercises that involve my legs. And as of now, I'm still not doing sit-ups or leg lifts, but I'll talk to my doctor. I have a visit in tomorrow, actually, and I'll ask him if it's okay to do those exercises. The other thing that's been helpful is I'm hoping in 12 weeks, although I may not have a full recovery, I'll be able to travel and do things, so I'm starting to schedule things. I'm interested in filmmaking. I've scheduled myself for events related to that. I've started scheduling, not booking, but making plans to visit friends overseas and do some flying again. So I hope your recovery is going along well. Uh, good luck. And now I'm going to untie myself and lock my brace. <laughs>